Yes, people, hope everyone is good. Georgina Rutter. This video is about Georgina Rutter, as you can tell by the title. Player for us last season who I think was absolutely key for most of the season in the way we played. There's conversation about him playing as a winger. Last year he played as a striker and he played as a number 10. Where will he play next season? What role will Daniel Farker give him? Where will he be better? In this video, I'm going to go through all these theories and, and give my opinion on it. Let's get straight into it. Let me know what you think in the comments, please. And please like. Thank you. I appreciate that. As per in these, we'll have different sections, so don't worry about it. We'll have a bit for everyone and some clips, well, some screenshots of clips, some stats, some comparisons to other players in the league, and of course, comparisons to him at Hoffenheim and how he played there and how that could work with Daniel Farker in this system. But we'll go to his season last year. Jorginho Rutter in the Championship, and look at his heat map. There's something that's really important in this video. Where he is on the pitch, what areas he occupies. But last season... Seven goals, 15 assists, predominantly as a 10, sometimes as a 9. That's a ridiculous return, obviously. There's one big standout. There's one big improvement he needs to make, and it's this. Seven goals, but 14 expected goals. Which is half. He was expected to score around 14 goals. That means his finishing is not on par, and we will get into that. Trust me. Now. Here are some key statistics. Read the colour coding. I've colour coded it so it's simpler to understand. So he, he scored seven goals last season, which was 14th in the league. And this is from people who are in that 10 role, right? Anyone in the league that played that 10 role who played over 20 games. That's the comparison here. He finished 14th for goals. Expected goals, third. Massively underperforming in the amount of goals he should have scored. And we all know that we could see it. Assists, 15. First in the league. Good. Assists per 90. Second in the league. Successful attacking actions. So of all the attacking actions he did in the game, he had 5.74 per game, which is third in the league. Very impressive. Goal conversion rate. 5.9. Reference shots. How many of them led to a goal? 5.9. 44th in the league for attacking midfielders. Not good. Shots on target, 33.9%. That's two, that's, that's two and a half shots per game, by the way. That's 31 in the league. Not good. Dribbles. But it gets good again. 7.78, second in the league. We know he's a dribbler. But how productive were those dribbles? Successful dribbles as a percentage. 52%, 10th in the league. So you can improve on that. Ball retention in dribbles. The decision making in the dribble. But where's he picking the ball up? We'll go through it in a minute. Trust me. Pass success. 69%. 49th. Not good. However, progressive passes. Third in the league. 84%. So they were picking up some... Where's he most effective? What's he most effective at? What can he improve in? Total action successful. 68%. Uh, in a game, which is 44% of those were successful actions from the 68. Compared to Keane and Jusbury Hall, who had a 64% success rate, O'Hare with a 61% success rate, and Azaz with a 59 as some, some comparisons. So as you can see, there is clear things there that need to improve. There is clear things I think can improve, and I'll show you why. Let's get into it. So this winger and fullback, this winger and 10 comparison is interesting. And here are some clips last year from him being effective from wide areas, right? Just as a glimpse as what he could do in that position. So it's the game against Norwich, starts centrally, but what is key is the next movement. So here is the furthest wide. So as a winger, look, if he's playing out wide, he will play that wide role. And he gets a goal from it. And the little box there, the little box in the corner, just show, the yellow just shows his run and where he's made that run and where the goals come from. Another example here, move my head, apologies, I'm going to have to keep moving it. As you can see, high up in that central area, high up, boom, drives and turns, identifies the space behind him in that wide area. And this is something you'll see that happened in his previous thing at Hoffenheim, his previous season. He loves, he's a player 
who likes space behind him when he's pinning a 1v1. He loves it, and he will win it every single time in this area. When he's in a position where this is the space behind him, best believe he'll find that space. A lot of the time this season, when Somerville played, it wasn't always allowed this area because some of us either already making that room, which is fine, or they would double, triple up on Somerville out wide, and Somerville didn't have that creative movement centrally to create space out wide for Jorginho. So Jorginho had that freedom across the front four, but Somerville didn't. And that's a key part of recruitment and who we bring in to allow where Jorginho plays and what role he is to make him effective. As you can see, ball across, good cross. Another thing I noticed about Jorginho from watching some Hoffenheim footage back, the guy gets assists with his left a lot. It's very interesting. He can use both feet in certain situations very well. As you can see from the box, the area. Another situation here, driving from wide. Some of them will drop centrally this time. Tell there's still more, there's still people to get past when Somerville's in that area. Drive centrally, gives the ball across to James. Another example here, gets the ball high and wide. 1v1 out wide. Central space. Cuts the ball across to Somerville. Finishes. And we know this one at Huddersfield where he absolutely destroyed. Gets the ball out wide, completely burns their entire defence. And look at, the, look at him attacking that space from deep identifying where that space is. And again, this is the move some of them needed to do more last season. Make this central run so Georgie has these spaces 1v1 to just completely drive and destroy them because he will do it because he's ridiculously good for this level. That's the one thing we cannot forget. And again, cuts it back to Somerville who scores. Comparing that, just remember this. It's time at Hoffenheim and look at the heat map. So he played predominantly as a front two, and he was one of the strikers. But his role was very, as you can tell, he had a lot of responsibilities out wide. He doesn't play as a winger. That wasn't his that wasn't his position. That was his role. You know, he he did go wide a lot from that position because that's how they attacked. But he wasn't a winger. But he was good there, and this is what's important. So in the year and a half he was there, you know, the full season, then he joined the Leeds in the January. 11 goals, 6 assists. Now, look at this. Look at the goals and the expected goals in that time. Compared to the other one, which was 7 and 14, 11 and 11.7. 11 it was a lot more clinical. And why was that? And I'll show you why. Again, more goals than assists. Which shows two things. He can do this and he can do this. He can do both. Effectively, as well. Look how he played. Look where most of his effective spaces are. Furthest left. Edge of the box. In space. To finish. Furthest right. In space. In so much space. Georgie Feliz, generally speaking, will pick the ball up in this area. He will be the person giving it to the ball progressor. Whereas for Hoffenheim, predominantly, he was the ball. He was the person who would progress the ball when it came out to him. He wouldn't really drive with it in these areas as much as he does for Leeds. He would often be in these positions. A great cross to this guy who scores, using his right. Again, end product, that final third pass, which we've already established is pretty decent. None of this stuff in here where he's not so effective with passing. Final third pass is where he is, and that's where he was used for Hoffenheim. A lot of it was out wide in the final third, the way in which he built up, whereas for Leeds, it was a lot deeper. Again, picking it wide, realising the space in a 1v1, right? Again, going wide in that wide area, recognising the space in a 1v1. Driving at him. Again, another cross to this guy who gets into the bottom corner. It's two. Now on the left, both sides. And remember, these are all different. Freedom, people. 
this guy can play across the line. Gets the ball. 1v1. Where's the space? And it's hard to mark because he came from a central position. But who's following him? Somerville is a winger. He plays that wide. You can double up. That's quite simple. Jorginho is a free player. He, he came from central and went wide. That's hard to mark. Cuts inside and hits it in the top corner. It was right. Ridiculous strike. Here he is again on the left. Playing on the last man. Recognising the spaces on the wide areas where he can exploit. Again, remember the cross we saw earlier for Somerville and for James? With his left? That's the one. Same again. The guy kicks it. Goal. The same things. And this is something I love. And this is something that's very different in Jorginho. Look at what he did at Hoffenheim. And this is where he's playing centrally. But look at the instinct. The guy's got the ball. The second he passes it to this guy, watch Jorginho's movement. He goes in front of the defender. Round the defender. Recognises the space in behind. Now for Leeds, Jorginho is one of these two. And he has the task of threading the ball through. Now, that's easy to do when the movement up there isn't as crisp or as good. So Georgie is usually in this position, but for Hoffenheim he did this position, like I said, that final third a lot more. And then look, because of his pace and his power and his instinct, he's in, takes it around the keeper, scores. Again, counter-attack situation. Look who's the highest up the pitch. Look who's, look, look who's attacking that space. Look who's stretching them. Jorginho is. That cross of his left, again, gets the assist. This is what we've seen for Leeds. Slightly deeper this time. He knows when this fullback, so wide, he knows when this fullback comes up to him. Remember the one I told you about when it's to his back to him? It's going to beat him every time. He knows exactly where that space is and he wants to attack it. Jorginho wants to attack space. Now for Leeds, at times, the issue was when he got the ball in, in his tight little areas where he got the ball, there was not a lot of space around him. He's a space player. He likes to drive into it, not necessarily receive it in tight spaces and try to get out of it. He likes to receive it in space or with space behind him so he can knock it past the defender and turn him. He's very good at that. When you have two wingers, like we did last year, who are excellent, players obviously but predominantly hugged the, the width that excluded Jorginho in them areas a lot of the time which meant there wasn't any obvious space for him to work in which meant he had to do a lot of his spaces in that tight 10 area and that didn't work it didn't work and we'll get into my conclusion on that in a minute tax that space boom has a strike keeper saves it corner same again This bit is every single time. This is every goal and assist Jorginho got this season. Now, what is key is to show here how he can be effective centrally and how he can be effective wide. The green ones is this season, is season for Leeds. The ones I'll show you next are the red and the red squares are for Hoffenheim. Now, look at the central. Look at it. These are all his goal and assists this season predominantly central areas. So which shows he can be effective there. He can adapt centrally. Again, all this season, showing how he can be effective in the box, around the box, deep going into the box, passes, wide areas. Now, the final one's there from this season. And then look at the red. This is Hoffenheim. What's different? Key difference is the lack of deep, receiving the ball deep and driving with it. He receives the ball either in the box, around the box, or wide. Wide, in and around the box, in and around the box, in the box, in the box. Look at the Leeds ones. These are all his golden assists for Offenheim. Look at the areas he is. Look how many he is central in the box getting a goal. Everything. And he's shown here, look, wide, wide. Wide, wide, central, 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 central. But he's got variety. The point is, 
no matter his role or his position, this guy can adapt. Build around him. This is my conclusion. This is what I'm coming up from this video to say. Forget the position real quick. What about him? What can he bring? We're talking about where we play him and where we can fit other players. First, where's he playing? Establish that. Where do you want him to play? Where does Daniel Farker want this player to play? If you're playing him centrally as the 10, it is key, key, that you have wingers who are also of the ilk of players who like to drift from their positions. Because you have a creative guy like Jorginho who doesn't like to stick in position and he wants to go wide, but you've got these two wingers who are constantly hooking those areas that doesn't allow Jorginho to find those spaces where he's effective, right? But if you have three players up there who are doing that, with the striker maintaining the line and stretching the play to giving more space in those areas, the wingers coming in, dropping deep, dropping centrally to create space for Jorginho out wide, that is perfect. And that is where I mentioned players like Todd Cantwell, for example, players who drift from their role. It's so difficult to have one. You have to have more than one. When Dia and Cantwell under Daniel Farker did that endlessly, they would constantly drift centrally and drift deeper wherever they needed to go. They would do it. Which allowed spaces out wide for new players, which meant when you're against a low block or a team's playing deep against you, there isn't obvious areas in which your players are going to run because you don't know where they're going to go. Who's marking them? Do they follow them? Do they move them on? And this is where you have a player like Jorginho, who, for me, next season will be the best player in the league if we play to his strengths and what he can bring. He's shown in, at Hoffenheim and Leeds, he can fit into different systems, he can play out wide, he can play centrally, he can play deep, he can even play in the box and be effective in the box. He's shown that. He's shown in equal measure that he can do both. Like I said here, Shoney can work in different systems and roles. Drive and beat anyone in space. Give this guy space. Get players in that are going to allow this guy space. Do that. Because he can take you to the Premier League with his ability. With the right players around him. That's the most potential. That is key. Because you want to unlock all of it. We unlocked a lot of it last season. But there's more there. There's more areas we can be effective. Build profiles around him. Build profiles around Jorginho. Don't put him out wide and get the new profiles in. Where's he playing? Establish that and build around that. Build around the profile. Because you're not going to bring anyone in that is better than Jorginho Rutter. You can bring people in who can complement Jorginho Rutter. That's the key. Like I said last year, and I'll keep saying this, and I stand by it, we had three outstanding players in the 10 and wide. Nonto, even James in there, obviously. James, Nonto, whoever you want to call it. Somerville and Rutter, four off three, whoever it was. They were outstanding players. But Nonto, James, Somerville were wingers. And they stuck out there. Virginia Rutter was a free-roam player. That's what he does. But where he roamed was often occupied with the movement of the front three Jorginho Rutter can be much more effective in more dangerous areas where he doesn't have to get the ball in tight areas where he's got four or five defenders around him and we're expecting him to take them on give this guy space build around him that's my outcome that's my verdict play him wherever you want but make sure wherever he is if he is a wide, if he is on the right or on the left, if he's a winger and that is predominantly his role, he still needs a free roll. Still needs a free roll. Because that's where he's best. That's where he's best. That's what I'd say. Get players that occupy different spaces. Get players who can bring the best out of him because he's the best player in the championship. He has the most potential. He's a freak in that league. Build around him, wherever he is. But yeah. And also, just one thing as well. 
watching some some video of him at Hoffenheim, people. He runs and he, he strikes a ball differently. He was he was definitely injured. I'm I'm convinced there were some problems with him last season. If anyone can get the footage of him kicking some, just kicking it, passing it, even like shooting, finishing, so much crisper, so much crisper. Maybe that's a nerves thing. Maybe that's a confidence thing. But there's more to come from that department. I truly believe it because he used to strike the ball different, cleaner, a lot cleaner. But yeah, that's all I've got. Let, I'll do more videos on Georgina. Don't you worry. There will be more. There's always more. Well, in a few weeks' time, once we see him in preseason, how he plays his role, I'll do an update on where his role might be next year. But this is my advice, what I think should happen. I'll let me know what you guys think. I appreciate all the support as usual. Please like. I massively appreciate it.